Good morning, respected chairperson, all panelists, my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Under my topic ureteric injury, I will speak about basic anatomy of ureter, what are different precautions that one should take to minimize the chance of ureteric injury, what are different mode of injury and if injury occurred, how to diagnose and manage it. Ureters are two in number, basically ureter is a thick wall muscular tube which convey urine from kidney to bladder. Its length is 25 centimeter and diameter is 3 mm. It begins at renal pelvis posterior to renal artery and vein at the level of L2 vertebra and it runs downwards over psoas muscles. Inferiorly it crosses under the gonadal vein regarding relation anteriorly on right side it is related to cecum, appendix and ascending colon and on left side it is related to descending colon and sigmoid colon. Medial to the sacroiliac joint it enters to pelvis and in pelvis ureter crosses anterior to the common iliac vessel. Regarding blood supply of the ureter, the basic concept that one should keep in their mind during surgical intervention is that in the abdominal part of ureter blood supply is situated on the medial aspect of ureter and in the pelvic part of ureter blood supply is situated on the lateral aspect of ureter. For the blood supply upper ureter getting the branches from the renal artery, gonadal artery and directly from aorta and the mid ureter get its supply from the common iliac and lower ureter getting blood supply from the common iliac as well as the branches of internal iliac artery. Regarding incidence, 75 percent of ureteric injury result from gynecological operation mostly in abdominal hysterectomy and its incidence is slightly more in case of extensive hysterectomy. And unfortunately, only one third of ureteric injury has recognized at the time of surgery. And as compared to right, left ureter is more commonly damaged because of its location near to sigmoid colon and its mesentery. And lowest 3 centimeter of ureter are more commonly damaged in itrocenic injuries. Ureter may get damaged by different mechanism of injuries like ligation, crushing, transaction, angulation, cauterization. There are 5 grade of ureteric injuries depending upon the presence of contusion or hematoma as a grade 1, if transaction is less than 50 percent as a grade 2, if it will be more than 50 percent will be considered as grade 3, if there will be a complete transaction with less than 2 centimeter of devascularized area it will be grade 4 and in case of avulsion with more than 2 centimeter of devascularized area it will be considered as grade 5. The risk factor includes an enlarged uterus especially if it arises from cervical or broad ligament fibroid, previous pelvic surgery, pelvic adhesion, distorted pelvic anatomy, endometriosis, history of pelvic irradiation, colorectal and erotofemoral bypass surgery, endoscopic procedure. Next important is what are the commonest site of injury? See how ureter and ovarian artery run parallel to each other at the level of pelvic brain. So while clamping the ovarian vessels at the level of infundibulo pelvic ligament one can damage the ureter or clamp it. Second dangerous point is in the broad ligament while clamping the uterine vessels. Third dangerous point is in the ureteric tunnel in cardinal ligament and fourth one is at the vault of the vagina before it enters the bladder. Now, if injury occurred, how one can diagnose the ureteric injury on the table? For this, we need to ensure something like we should ensure adequate exposure, we should achieve hemostasis and also we should ensure about the proper positioning of otolite. And we need to check the ureteral integrity by visual inspection and isolation for the presence of contusion, hematoma, ligation or lack of peristalsis. And if on this basis injury is suspected, please do the diet test to reveal the site of injury and confirm it by retrograde pallogram via cystoscopy.
Treatment modality depends upon multiple factors like site of injuries, whether injury is in the upper, mid or the lower part of ureter. Second important fact is how much length of the ureter had damage and third one is the integrity of opposite ureter. Fourth one is the time of diagnosis whether it diagnosed intraoperatively or postoperatively and fifth one is etiology of injuries. If injury recognized during surgery and suppose causative agent is clamp or ligature, it should be removed immediately and then do retrograde catheterization of ureter either with infant feeding tube or a stent for 3 to 6 weeks and then remove the stent and do contrast CT or IVP to confirm ureteral patency and exclude a stricture. If laceration or transaction is less than 50 percent of the diameter of ureter, then to end to end anastomosis as an ureterous ureterostomy. So, this ureterous ureterostomy is indicated for the injury in the upper and mid part of ureter if no significant loss is there and for this surgery both ends of the ureter, ureter are espatulated and sutured preferably over a stent. If injury in the lower part of ureter with no significant loss then we need to implant the ureter in the bladder as a ureteroneocystostomy. If loss is significant, then for the upper and mid part of ureter, the options are ureteroileal interposition and trans ureterostomy. And for the lower segment, the options are vesicoswasage and body flap. So, if the significant loss is there in the lower segment up to 15 centimeter, we can consider swasage. Swasage is basically a versatile procedure to bridge the gap between bladder and ureter and this we can achieve by pulling the bladder up and stitching it to the swas muscles to prevent tension after ureteroneocystostomy. Next option is body flap, this is indicated even if the lower segment is lost for more than 15 centimeter and here the bladder is opened on its anterior surface and then full thickness bladder flap is swung cranially, then flap is tubularized for anastomosing the proximal ureteral segment as a body flap. Next is trans ureterostomy. this is indicated when the length of the lower segment of the ureter is not adequate and here the cut end is anastomosed to the ureter on the opposite side. See how donor ureter is tunneled through the mesentery and get anastomosed to the recipient ureter as a in to side anastomosis. Next is ureteral substitution with the ileum, appendix, stomach or colon. This is indicated when the lower segment is not long enough to implant into the bladder without tension. Here a distal segment of the ileum is cut and attached to the ureter at the upper end and implanted into the bladder at the lower end. If ureter is extensively damaged and ureteral reconstruction is not possible, then please ligate the ureter, do percutaneous nephrostomy and consider for renal auto transplantation. In old case of an ureteric injury, patient usually present with abdominal pain, feature of peritonitis, leukocytosis, fever, sometimes urinoma. And in all such situation, please do cystoscopy, USG, retrograde pallogram and consider for a possible stenting. In old case of uretic injury, better to do PCN, wait for 3 months, do AGP and RGP and plan for definitive reconstruction. So, our goal should be prevention as prevention is better than cure and for this we need to follow some guidelines. So, there must be an adequate exposure and appropriate incision for a pelvic surgery. We should preserve the adventitia on the ureter while handling the ureter. We should consider preoperative CT with contrast and stenting at least in selected and complex cases. We should avoid blind clamping to control bleeding especially at cardinal infundibular pelvic and uterosacral ligament. Application of cautery should be for a shorter duration and we should avoid the use of hot instrument before cooling it especially in the ureteric area and ligation of cardinal ligament and uterine vessel should be very close at the uterus. So, summary is that for a distal ureteral injury, ureteroneocystostomy with or without a vesicosausage is the preferred option. For the mid ureteral and proximal ureteral injury, 
ureteroureterostomy, ileal conduit and trans ureteroureterostomy are the option. If the distal segment is ileal conduit, ureteroureterostomy is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is unsuitable for anastomosis, ileal conduit is the option. If the distal segment is uns